another episode of Fully Witch of the West. I'm your host, Madeline. Uh, this is a video cast primarily about fiber arts, knitting and spinning with occasional natural dyeing and weaving and felting thrown in, although I haven't done an awful lot of that lately. I am pretty sure that the name of this episode is going to be the Blizzard Edition. I'll put in some footage at the beginning or the end of this for you to be able to see. Right now, northwestern Montana is in the middle of a storm, and I drove into the yarn shop anyway since it's not that far from town, and I have a, I have a pretty good rig. We call them rigs. I'm very Montana, I'm sure you can tell. Um, I have a pretty good car and good tires, so. But it is, it is coming down out there. I've spent a lot of my day shoveling over and over again, so. We'll see, we're supposed to accumulate upwards of 18 inches. My dog thinks she wants to go sit out in the snow so that she can get soaking wet and come back inside the shop while I'm filming this and drip water everywhere. So I'm gonna ignore her, but if you hear a bell ringing in the background, I trained my dog to ring the bell on the door when she wants to go out. So she's very smart and very good, but I'm still not gonna let her out at this moment. So, um, I'm on a bit of a time schedule today. Today is February 17th, which is my spouse creature's birthday, so I have a dinner to go to after this at the grandparents' house. We live right next door to my spouse's grandparents, which is really nice, so they're going to do dinner over there. So I'm going to try and be quick, which I'm not usually terribly good at. I tend to kind of ramble a little bit. I'm still going off script, and uh, I will try and remember everything, and if I forget the name of any dyers or designers, I will make sure that I look them up and I put them in the show notes below if I don't get to talk about them right now. Um, so this will be kind of a challenge because I have an awful lot to talk to you all about. The last episode that I uploaded, which was in February, was actually recorded in January, and I was kind of having a case of the winter blues and hadn't been being very productive. Um, so there wasn't an awful lot in it, but I have kind of um, gotten myself going and I have a lot to talk about today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get to it. So first of all, I'm trying to wear more of the things I've already made while I'm podcasting. I know a lot of people do that. Um, so I have on a cardigan I made today. I'm gonna stand up real quick. So, as you can see, it's a simple top-down raglan um, starter edge on the bottom and button band and cuffs. This pattern is called um, the Court of Gillette Ete. I think the designer is French. The pattern was in English. Um, it's was pro definitely probably designed for a much lighter weight yarn that I used. This is 100% silk. I'm not sure if this is from the um, Darn Good Yarn Company, which is one of the companies that's currently doing recycled sari silk yarn, but that is um, what this yarn is, and it's cold out today, so even though it's short-sleeved, it's definitely a, one of my winter garments. Um, because it is heavy and it's very warm and very cozy. And I go back and forth with this sweater. I love the vibrant colors. Some days I feel like it's the most beautiful thing I've ever made. What are you doing? Chewing on something. And some days I feel like it makes me look a little bit like a Muppet because it's, it's very fuzzy, like you can see on the edges. It's like that all over the whole garment. I, there are some places where it was longer that I've trimmed it. Um, but yeah, I'm not a huge garment knitter. This is only the second adult-sized sweater I've ever made. The first one I gave away um, as a gift. And this is the first sweater that was knit all in one piece that I've that I made, and I really enjoy that construction. And I feel like the heaviness of the silk makes the drape on this really nice, especially for me as a, a larger woman and having just the one button kind of makes it a pretty attractive, comfy, cozy sweater. 
So there you go. Something I knit. I'm actually wearing my knitwear. Um, yes, I don't remember the name of that designer, but I will link the pattern in the show notes. So I'm going to start with finished objects in knitting and then uh, works in progress. And then I'll do the same for spinning. And I will kind of go from there. So I have mostly fun things this week. Well, all knitting is fun, right? I feel that way. But I have a couple small things and then one massive thing on finished um, objects for knitting. So the first finished object is not a huge one, although it's taken me forever to actually do this. And the first object is this slightly skewed, even though I blocked it, um, blanket square. So I'm hoping that once it gets sewn in with its brethren, that, that will kind of help straighten it out a little bit. But, um, so I should back up a little bit. This is for the Knit Together project that's being put on by Melissa of the Knitting the Stash podcast. Um, and she is fantastic and wonderful, and she had the idea to, for people to knit blanket squares and mail them in together for kind of a knitting project that celebrates community and all of us knitting together, even though uh, often we're very far apart. So this is my Montana square that I'm sending in. And I chose to use the yarn that I used for this square for several different reasons. So part of why my square is wonky is because I used this yarn, which as you can see from my cake, is not terribly, terribly consistent. So um, this is definitely, as I said, it's a Montana square, so this is... Um, Montana wool that I picked up from a local farmer at the Montana Fiber Arts Festival. Um, I believe it's a CVM Romney cross. And uh, before I spun the fiber, I dyed it with some bindweed from my friend Katie's garden. And she's um, a very good friend that I made. Um, up here who's been very supportive of especially my natural dyeing and spinning projects and she comes into the shop and hangs out with me and gives me things from her garden all the time so um, I thought that was a good aspect for this um, project thinking about community um, and then since it was such a lovely fluffy roving prep I decided that I wanted to learn how to spin woolen and this is the first yarn that I I tried that on and my friend Siri, who is also the dyer and spinner behind Montana Woolworks, taught me how to spin long draw. So this yarn has had a lot of help from different people in my immediate physical knitting and fiber arts community. And that's why I chose to use it to send along to be part of the greater blanket. So it's a bit rugged and it's a bit thick and thin. And it's not perfect, but it's very soft, and it is kind of fluffy, and I feel like I mostly succeeded in spinning a woolen yarn, and that all of us working together and supporting each other and talking about what we've learned and how we've learned and all of our mistakes and things are part of what makes the fiber arts community great. I don't really encounter an awful lot of people who aren't enthusiastic and willing to jump in and teach if they can teach or help if they can help or just be enthusiastic and supportive which is why I love this community so much and part of why I started this little um this little podcast video cast of my of my own to share my own learning experiences and projects with all of you on the internet and the greater community so there it is, my Knit Together Project Square. I will pop this in the mail and send it to Melissa. And, um, yeah. Also, a funny thing, I've been knitting for a very long time. I picked up knitting when I was 18 years old. Um, so I... I'm not going to tell you when that was. But, um, I've never made a blanket square before. 
<laughs> so adding to the list of, of firsts with this, a new, a new fiber for me, a new dye, a new spinning technique, the first blanket square I've ever knit. <laughs> Um, which I think is kind of hilarious. You'd think I would have picked that up by now. So, there it is. That's the story behind my my square for the Knit Together project. So, if you want to be part of that, anybody can join. You should just look up Melissa and the Knitting the Stash, stash video cast. She's here on YouTube. And they have a group on Ravelry as well. So you can just get involved with that and she'll just shoot her a message and she'll tell you where to send it in. So that's fun. Um, and at the end, everybody who's entered a blanket square is entered to win the blanket, and someone will win the blanket. So moving along, I also do not remember the pattern designer for this next thing, but I will figure that out too and write it down. So when I visited my sister, I have a nephew who's very supportive of all of my fiber arts things and thinks it's the bee's knees. And we dyed some yarn together. This very speckly, greeny, foresty, with pops of red goodness, which is very lovely. And I knit myself a pair of mittens. So they look like this. There's the other one. And yes, my hands really are that small. Tiny paws. I haven't made an awful lot of mittens. This is the only the second pair I've actually finished. The light in here is pretty, pretty good. Overall, they're they're more green than brown, although they look a little brownish. And the wool was just white, white when you started. I think it's a super wash. Wool we just picked up while I was there for this particular project and I think the name of this the pattern is Bias Knit Knits or something similar to that. I do still have the link. I will find it. It's a fantastic knitting pattern for worsted weight yarn. And I just, I love the bias. I love just the little detailing of the cuffs. The thumb gussets on the pattern were great. This yarn is starting to fuzz a little bit. It may not be the highest quality yarn, but I really love them. And he told me that those look great, Auntie Madeline. You can make me matching fingerless mitts if you have leftovers. So I'm pretty sure that this is enough leftover for a pair of fingerless mitts for a seven-year-old. So that's the next thing on the needles for that yarn. And I have one more finished object which is a great big one. And I already posted on Instagram, even though it's taken me a while to get to film about it because I couldn't stand it. And I had to take pictures as soon as I actually finished it and woven all the ends. So the finished project is the rainbow shawl I've been working on for the spouse creature. Holy cow. So it's very big end to end. I should have measured it. It's more than my wingspan by quite a bit, by this much. And it is a shawl that I didn't use a pattern for. It's just a basic um, crescent shawl, all in garter stitch. When I got close to the end of one of the colors, I started striping in the next. And it's a full rainbow gradient set. Um, the yarn is a lace weight merino single superwash I believe and they were dyed by Blue Savannah Yarns. I've been working on this project since I got this yarn which was in June. So this was meant to be a pride shawl and I thought I would knit all of it in the month of June and that did not happen. So there it is. I'm very happy that it's finished. I did not wait to give this to the spouse creature for their birthday. I gave it to them the moment it was done before I even wove in the ends and then have taken it back for various stages of finishing. Um, the other thing about this shawl is that it has not been blocked and I don't think, I don't think I'm going to. Um, I just did a straight across regular bind off um, and I'm a little bit, it's, it has some give but the, my bind off is not very stretchy. 
So I'm afraid if I blocked it and it grew, it may make that finished edge wonky. And unblocked, it's just, it's wonderful. It's huge, it's comfy, it's very squishy. It's not too heavy um, because they don't really like heavy, heavy knitwear. They don't wear a lot of really, really warm things. Angela definitely runs, runs warmer than I do. So this is perfect for her, and I am very, very happy that it's done. I think the last time I recorded, I had just, had I just started the yellow or the green? I'm not sure, but that's, that's a lot of yardage. I think each mini was 200 yards, I think. So, yeah, that's probably the most yardage I've put into a single project ever. And I'm happy with that. Um, I have finished a little hand spun shawlet for myself with the yarn I showed you last time that I had received as part of a swap with Anna Marsh of Santa Creek Creations. It has not been blocked yet, which is why I don't have it with me. It'll definitely be better to show to you guys when it's blocked, so that's going to have to wait for next time. I'm sorry, I keep distracting. <laughs> I'm talking really quickly because I'm trying to go quickly, but I also keep distracting myself looking out the window at all the snow and what I have to drive through to get home. So, that's exciting. Uh, the next... Ooh. Work in progress I have is... Um, more snackable than I'd like it to be, but what can you do? Um, so the next work in progress I have on the needles that I've made quite a bunch of progress on is my Meandering Shawl by Stephen West. And I think last time I was way up here somewhere around there, and now I am way down here. Boop. So I've reached the point where um, it's too big for me to stretch out past my needles. This is what the, the other side looks like. I can't decide which side of this I like better because I, I feel like I picked the perfect yarns for this project. Um, so I, am, I have um, one more zag, they, zig, a zag, a zag. <laughs> um, left on the repeats that I'm doing down here so this will zag back that way and then I'm on to the border and this I am doing in yarn that was dyed by the polka dot sheep which is a Montana dyer based out of the knit and needle yarn shop which is down in Whitefish which is about a little ways south of me my very friendly moon dog has helped herself to my bag, so I'm afraid my yarn is a bit dogged at the moment. And as you can see, I'm getting down to the ends, so I, ho I hope I have enough to make it. I feel like I'm already playing a game of yarn chicken with this pattern, um, and I am knitting the smaller size version of this shawl. There's a much larger version that you can knit with more repeats of the zigzags or with a DK weight yarn. So the purple color is called Juneberry, and it's very tonal and has lots of lovely pink in it. And the speckles with the pink and the yellow and with the blues, gray, or the grays and blacks and whites. Oh my gosh, so much dog hair, I had no idea. Um, it's called Summer Storm. And those are wonderful. I believe it's also super wash merino, I believe. It's very squishy fingering weight. And I'm on... I don't even remember what size these needles are. Threes, maybe? Threes? Maybe fours? I think maybe fours for this one. That sounds right. I do have many other works in progress, technically, but all of them have kind of been hibernating for a bit now. Um, so I'm not going to go into all the shawls or the socks that I need to finish knitting or the other pair of mittens that I have on the needles. So I'm going to move on to spinning, which I also have a lot of, and I'm going to just try and go through very quickly. So, apologies. 
hopefully I'm not making you all crazy with all of this. So once again, my dog is, she's smart and she's funny and she's mischievous and she's never actually destroyed any of my wool things or yarns. But she knows I care about them, so if she's bored or she wants my attention, I keep things in little bags, and sometimes she'll just go and grab one and drag it over. So, and sometimes, even recently, she has found a bag of my hand spun, drug it over, and then just pulled every skein out and placed it around the room. They haven't been, like, glommed, they didn't get felted, they weren't at all ruined, they were just kind of threateningly taken out of the bag and set around the room. So we're working on that, but everything I'm showing you today has a little bit more dog hair in it than normal because all of it was in the same bag that she decided she was going to explore. So I'm going to work on not keeping things within reach, but when your dog is in Akbash, whatever is within reach is... there's quite a lot of that. In any case, I have finished my Raven Ridge Fiber Art Spin. That's pretty good for the colors, actually. The light is not great in here now that it's starting to get dark outside. I think last time I had the same pro problem and I said I was going to try and record earlier, but I didn't. So, yay! Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. All this loveliness. Beautiful, rich colors. Ricky of Raven Ridge Fiber Arts is the dyer behind this fiber. Um, it's lovely. It's very squishy. I don't know how well focused that is. Not bad. Um, and it's mostly, there are lots of really dark purples in there too, and some blues. The colorway is called Huckleberry, and this is a Polworth and Silk blend. And I spun eight ounces of it. Well, I feel like I'm a little lispy today. I'm sorry. I spun eight ounces of it, um, worsted style, so short, short forward draw, and then smoothing back to get a very, very smooth yarn. Did I say it was Polworth and silk? It's Polworth and silk. Um, and I just realized that. I don't actually know what the yardage on this is. I don't know what yardage I have. But I had intended to try and make like a garment type thing for myself with this, um, but I don't, I think I probably don't actually have enough yardage. Um, I keep going for spinning a fingering weight. Of course, I just toss that away. But I, um, I never quite make it. My spinning is, I feel like it's improving and it's fairly good and I can get fairly fine um, in places, but it's not always, I'm not 100% consistent, which, I mean, I don't mind with hand spun. I like it to look like I spun it by hand. Um, but my point is, I think that I didn't get the weight quite the weight I wanted. Um, Although overall, between the two, I spun two different bumps of four ounces each and then plied them back on themselves. I feel like um, overall the yarn is, is, is similar even with the inconsistency. So I can use it all for the same project, but I don't quite know what I'm going to make with it now. I had dreams of maybe a cardigan, but of course, like I said, I also haven't made an awful lot of garments. So my ideas on the yardage you might need for a large project like that is not quite on par. So I don't think I have enough of this to do that. But I might have enough to do like a lovely bust. Or it may end up being a shawl. Because I enjoy making shawls. Um, so that's the first finished spin I have for you. And the second finished spin I have is this which is, sorry, I don't have a jumbo fly, so I just ply on my regular bobbin, so I can never get, I, it's very, I don't get four ounces actually plied, like I can spin a whole four ounces, but then to ply it, I have to break it up. So this is the, um, 
Targi. I want to say Romney. Romney Targi, I think. Cross from Goldie Knots and T, which I picked up at the Montana Fiber Arts Festival. Um, all spun up. And this I've been practicing since I spun that yarn for my little knit together project square. Um, I spun this woolen style, so I spun this all long draw. Um, and I'm realizing the more I do these video casts that I really ought to label everything and be a little more organized so I can talk to you more about the weight and yardage for these things. But as you can see, actually it's fair it's it's not like it's with as with the other one, it's not 100% consistent, but it's fairly that's fairly good. It's very stretchy, very squishy and very very fluffy. So, I also brought over as a, an example just a little bit I don't know if this is actually going to work of like why you should you should finish your yarns this is just a little bit that wouldn't fit on another bobbin that I did not finish and you can see it's a little more inconsistent it's certainly a little more springy and not finished than all of this stuff is. So finish your yarns. Um, I thought this was going to bloom more actually is part of why I didn't wash this because I expected this to puff up um, but actually it didn't. It, it smoothed down more than it puffed up and I didn't I didn't um, dry this with weight on it. I um, snapped it and then I thwacked it since it's woolen yarn so I whacked it on things. Um, to kind of encourage the fibers to stay together. But um, now that I look at it, I expected this to bloom and be thicker than this. But overall, it's a much more even, even yarn. And it's pretty balanced. I felt like I was, like, wicked underplying it when I was plying. But not so bad. that and I just I love this color where it looks it looks kind of gray from a distance but it's really a mixer a mixture of brown and white it's just like such a warm comforting color and I have one more finished spin which is good because as you recall in the last episode I talked about that I had done a trade with Anna Marsh of Santa Creek Creations who sent me wonderful, glorious hand spun. So I spun up my part of her trade and she is a wonderful dyer who uses acid dyes and gets very, very bright, cheerful, poppy, vibrant colors. Um, and I do have some more of, of her yarn that I'll show on the podcast later on, um, video cast. I don't actually do a podcast when I finally, um, cake it up and make socks out of it but it, her stuff is wonderful and I went back and forth over whether what I had in my stash for myself to spin that I had dyed would be something that she would use and I decided to just go with it and send it to her anyway so she has something different than what she would do herself that's the point of doing swaps right so what I came up with was this I'll flip it around so this skein, I am getting a little blown out. I do have some better photos of it on my Instagram feed. But this is kind of an odds and ends skein. It's all the same fiber, which is a um, not named wool and, um, and mohair blend from a local anim animal rescue um, called Poverty Flats in our area. And, oh, I really wish it wasn't blowing out, because I'm actually really proud of this. I'm 
but it's all the all the the leftover dyes that I had from um, the summer. All the wool I had dyed and not spun, I combo spun it all together and just kind of randomly picked strips of each color and as long as it didn't match the last one I spun, and then I plied it back on itself. So the purple is Oregon grape. The green was dyed with sage. There's uh, yellow from peppermint in here. There's orange from avocado pits. Um, or orange from avocado skins and pits together. There is pink from raspberries. And I'm, I'm actually, I'm really pleased with how this, how this worked out. And I really, I hope she likes it. I do know that not everybody enjoys mohair. I, it doesn't really bother me. I love the sheen you can get from it. I love the halo that you get from it. Um, but a lot of people do find it scratchy. And I'm finding with the stuff that I knit up out of the fibers that I dye that I need to, I need to work with some more wool that doesn't have mohair blended with it. But you can kind of see the halo. In there. So yeah, that's like, I'm just really pleased. I dyed all of that and all of the natural colors just work together so well. So yay. So I'm going to, now that I've podcasted and I have a paycheck, I'm going to stick that in the mail <laughs> to Anna Marsh. Every time I think I can mail people things, bills come through, you know? but it's not happening this time. I have a few, several people I need to mail packages for for various swap things, and they are all going in the mail. It's going to happen on Monday. Um, so as far as spins in progress go, I have... Excuse my highlighter. <laughs> um, this is the wool from Montana Woolworks, my friend Siri I was talking about earlier. I showed you the pencil roving that I was spinning last time and I had it on the bobbins. This is half of it is singles all caked up and ready to ply from a center pool ball. Um, like I said last, no not, last time I think I lamented about not leaving your ends fluffy and having to cut that Raven Ridge fiber arts to be able to ply it. This is, um, this is my trick to keep this center pole ball from collapsing on itself and losing the singles in there and getting them tangled before I have a chance to ply since I'm not going to be able to sit down and ply this um, tonight and I may not be able to do that tomorrow either we'll see so this is just a safe way for me to store my singles as a cake until I have a chance to get to them because I don't have a ball winder in my home and if I can wind my singles into a cake while I'm here at the shop I do that um, so that's what the singles look like, and I don't know why, I feel like woolen spun singles, I feel like they're way more fragile than if I do um, worsted or semi-worsted spinning, so that's also part of why the highlighter. But I do have half of this done, um, that's what I spent today doing in the shop between people, and there were a lot of people, a blizzard reminds people how much they like wool, I guess. So that's not bad for us. Um, so this is what I have done of that. Some... So fun! So fluffy! Oh my gosh. Um, and I used a different Nitty Naughty here in the shop, so these are in one yard rounds instead of two. So overall it's very, very blue and she has some warm pops. Of purples in here applied it looks way the red red there's like red it looks more purpley but there's definitely red in there it looks more purpley once it's applied so I'm very excited to finish this and actually finish it and snap it and thwack it um, because it's I don't remember I do have the tag not with me for the breed um, of this but it's a very similar feel to this so I think these two things are going to be color work together I haven't decided what this is another situation where it's like ah oh, Tammy I should have bought all of this from you because wouldn't that be the most beautiful yoked sweater all together and woolen and fluffy and warm all Montana all small scale 
wool producers. That would be the coolest. Um, she did say she has more of this fleece. Not that I need more wool. I have plenty of wool. But I, I will see. I feel like I'm reaching a point with my hand spun with these few projects and what I have going on where I'm actually starting to develop a, a bit of a stash, which is um, not something I, I had before. I would like spin something and then immediately stop spinning and, and knit what I had just come up with right away. I couldn't stop myself, but now I've had other large-scale projects that I've really gotten into. So um, it is one of my goals to usually have some hand spun on the needles. So there's that. Okay, so I do have just one more thing I wanted to talk to you guys about, mostly because I wanted some opinions, so I'm hoping that maybe I'll get some actual um, comments, if you could comment below and let me know what you think. I may also pose this question on Instagram. I'm really active on Instagram. Um, so, and the questions, once again, I don't have the names to go with this, which I feel terrible about. But, so... I have a combo spin that I started also back in June after I'd been to the Montana Fiber Arts Festival. And I had just come across the idea of combo drafting where you hold two different colorways or um, strips of two different braids together and you draft them both at the same time. And so I bought some fiber at, um, at the festival from a lovely woman whose name... I can't remember and I feel terrible about that. But she was really wonderful and this is the first one. And I don't know, I don't remember what the fiber is either. Which I also am feeling silly about, but I think I talked about it in a previous episode so I will look it up. So this is the first bit. I've stripped down the braids um, and they were each 4 inch braids so I have 8 ounces of this. Um, and this colorway I remember it's really washing out. This colorway was called Freya, which I love, 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 and it's got some pretty deep teals in it, and occasionally kind of more purpley or purples. Um, so this is the first fiber I was using for that, and she also had one-off braids where she just threw in fiber to totally exhaust her dye pots, which I thought was really neat, and this was one of those. So this is a one-of-a-kind finish the dye pot, pinky, purpley, and these are the same fibers. Um, and I don't know, I don't recall what it is, but it's, a. Uh, it's coarser, and I don't feel, I feel like it's a medium staple, and it probably is super washed, but I'm not sure. So there are those two things. And so I, like I said, I combo drafted and spun them together, and this is what that looks like. There is a little bit of color in here that doesn't match, like this purple and that yellow, um, just ignore those. Those were already on the bobbin. So when I chain plied it, I just chain plied all of it. So this is what that looks like when I combo draft those together and then <laughs> chain ply them. Dog hair. Oh my gosh. Uh, hairy beast. So the, and I took me a long time <laughs> to come back to this wool partly because this is the last thing I spun on my Ashford traditional before I gifted it to my friend Jillian. Um, and so she was like coming to the shop and pick it to pick it up and I was plying this like as fast as I could, chain plying it to get it off her bobbin. So I could give her all of the bobbins all at once since I didn't know when I would run into her again. So when I first um, pulled this off the bobbin after I'd plied it. It was a disaster. It was so over applied. It was like, <laughs> like you take it off the nitty naughty and it just became this tangle of, of so much extra twist and I was so embarrassed. And of course it happened like right in front of Jillian who's this brand new spinner who's so excited to get this wheel. <laughs> it was, it was pretty funny. Um, and I got mad at it, so I just took that skein and I wound it up and I just, like, moved on to other things, spinning other things. Mostly things that I had dyed, I think, because it was that season. So, I don't know if I love it is part of it. And, of course, if I, um, if I did a two-ply, it would be very different. 
But overall, of course, combo drafting these has really marled the colors quite a bit, and, and especially then in a three-ply. So there's barber pulling on top of marling. There's a good section. And I just don't know if I love it, is basically what it comes down to. And I knew this was going to be wool that I kind of sampled with be when I got it, and I started to combo draft with it because I... You know, it, it was new. I also have not done an awful lot of chain plying and had not done an awful lot of chain plying. I was on a chain plying kick. Um, so my question is, what do you all think I should do? This is, um, I don't know. I don't know what I expected. Um, but I don't know if I love this yarn or if I, I don't know if I hate it either. I mean, it might be kind of charming. I'll, what I'll probably do is cake this up, and I might knit up uh, just a swatch to see what it will look like if I knit it. Um, but my problem is that I love this. This is wonderful. And this is charming, and I think I was trying to move kind of more out of my comfort zone. I'm not a big pink person, um, but I just thought it was very cheerful um, at the time. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to swatch that, and I'll show that to you next time. But what do you all think? Should I just continue with the experiment and continue to combo draft this? If I do that, I think I'm going to strip my strips down further because it was really difficult to draft these two together at the same time, and then it will be more marled, even more than, than that was. Um, because these, it was a little more than I could handle. I also do have a new wheel. I have a shacked match list now. And I think that, that being able to adjust ratios will really help. Um, especially because I had this habit of when I get like mucked up. A lot of people, if they're having issues with twist, they like slow down their treadling. I have the opposite problem. If things start going wrong and I start losing control, I don't just like stop and like pull off and then like chill out a second and reattach and start again. I like keep going only I get stressed out and I treadle faster. <laughs> so then it becomes a real mess. Um, but the shaft helps with that because I can adjust the ratios and tension really easily. I love the double drive on that wheel. So I could either continue combo drafting them um, and do it as a two ply maybe and think about that. I could also just combo spin them and spin the rest of this fiber and ply one with the other and then this would be all barba pulled. There would be some places where it was really similar but most of it wouldn't be. Or I can just spin it all separately, ply it on itself, each one individually, and then use them to knit something together since they're the same fiber. And I don't know. I have I have eight ounces. And then I don't know what I would do with this, but it was a good learning experiment. So there's that. So that's it. If you would please let me know what you think I should do with this wool. Or if you have any tips for combo drafting, I would love to hear them because that was tricky and I'm only just now beginning to think about getting back to it now that I've done many, many other things. And um, I'm just working my way back to it. Um, so if you just want to let me know, please do leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this um, quick little rambling of mine, please do um, like the video so it shows up in other people's feeds when they're looking for other wool folk to look at and chat with and subscribe to my channel. I am currently actively trying to get more people to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that I can have a customized name so it will be like youtube.com slash woolly witch of the west instead of slash blah which is what it is now which makes it difficult for me to link to and all of that so please um like share subscribe comment i'd love to hear from any of you if you are watching and i am madeline and the woolly witch of the west i'm very active on instagram is where i'm the most active where my handle is woolly witch of the west there's the dog Hello, Moondog. On um, Ravelry, I'm Woolly Witch OT West, and I have made it a New Year's resolution that I'm going to keep better project pages and notes up there. I also do have a Facebook page if you want to like me there. I don't post there quite so often, but I will some. And other than that, I hope you have wonderful, wool-filled weeks and get to do everything that you love. The Moondog says goodbye, too.
Have a nice day.